Once upon a time in the rush countryside of Katete Mbarara, located in western Uganda, there lived a passionate and innovative farmer named Dominic Kashachi. Inspired by his love for nature and sustainable agriculture, Dominic dedicated himself to cultivating jackfruit trees without the use of pesticides. His commitment to organic farming and his unwavering belief in the potential of jackfruit farming soon turned his humble garden into a thriving oasis. Thank you very much. I'm called Dominic Atsim Mokashachi. Uh, my farming is, is I started it like a hobby, but I come I came to realize that it is actually a much better one. And uh, people find it funny when I tell them I concentrated on the funny because I have like four hundred plants. Originally I was a banana grower. But the climate later did not favor. But importantly is the returns productivity per unit area. The tree of the mature one, I'm talking of a mature one, well grown, uh, can give you a hundred of them per season and there are usually two seasons. So it is very possible to get 200 uh, jackfruit uh, fruits from one single tree. And uh, uh, currently, locally, it's at a range of like 4,000. So you can comfortably say you can easily get 0.8 a year from just one. So uh, that's why I took it. I said, let me take it seriously. The space it takes is exactly the same spacing we usually use, use for banana in my local area in Yokanga. And on banana, you would get at most two cuttings a year. And at an average, you say like 15,000, that's 30,000. But we are talking now of 800,000. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm saying, it's, I think we need to think strategically. One other advantage I see with it is that convenience. With the time, you don't even need workers. The drops, the leaf drops, you don't, you don't have any weed there. And the third advantage I find with Fene is the, uh, the uh, sustainability of income. Daily you must pick Fene. Daily. And that is one way of getting out of stress. The moment you have daily income. You can have even uh, building and f buildings and flats and you go, uh, there, you find you don't have even money for chapel. You not go to a tenant that pay me in advance, I have this, I'm cash speaking. But once you have your daily income, yeah, that is one who oh, oh, fighting for stressful old age. But Fene is a crop to grow. And currently I'm seeing many people coming. Uh, those who export it have not ventured into that. I said for the time you let me specialize in the growing. Others can, the others or the children will venture into the other one of marketing. Dominic's decision to venture into jackfruit farming in western Uganda was not without its challenges. In this region, cultural belief held a suspicious notion that growing jackfruit and witnessing its maturity was associated with death. However, Dominic being an innovative and open-minded farmer saw an opportunity to challenge this belief and capitalize on the popularity of jackfruit among the locals. Driven by his passion for agriculture and desire to prove the superstition wrong, Dominic embarked on his journey. He recognized that jackfruit was not only a delicious and nutritious fruit, but also had immense potential for economic growth. By cultivating jackfruit trees in his garden, Dominic aimed to showcase the benefits of sustainable farming practices while breaking the cultural stigma associated with jackfruit. Unfortunately, it is cultural because there is a very wide, wide belief that which I found and which is still going that when you go, when you go if and when it matures, you die. I don't know how many times I would have died. I think like 500 times <laughs> dying and resurrecting. But uh, I found uh, Fene liked by many. It's a good delicacy. And uh, given the nutritional values it has, especially in the West, yeah. but I've never seen anybody with, 
I said, no, let me venture in this and see. I started with just one. It gave me a true picture of what it can be. When I thought of retiring, I said, let me plan ahead. And that is how I... Patience was virtual. Dominic had learned from his years as a farmer. He knew that jackfruit trees took long to mature and produce fruit. Typically, it took about five to eight years for a young jackfruit tree to bear its first harvest. However, once established, these trees could produce abundant fruit up to a hundred years. Hey, you need to be patient. You don't, you don't simply venture into it if you are the impatient type. In a span of like five years, it can give you fruits. But mature fruitation would begin, and serious one, would, what I would consider commercial would begin at eight years. So if you don't have that resilience of waiting, don't venture there. And that, that means it calls for you to have another alternative source of income as you wait for. But for me, what I did, I intercropped it with others. I have Boboya, I have Kabaragara. Then underneath, I have three canopies. Top, Fene and Vakedo, Midro, Banana. Then uh, at the lower level, I plant pumpkins. Dominic's commitment to organic and sustainable farming practices extended to his approach to pests and diseases in his jackfruit farm. As a traditionist and environmentist, he firmly believed in the power of natural solutions and did not rely on chemical pesticide or treatments. While pests and diseases could pose challenges to jackfruit trees, Dominic embraced the historic and eco-friendly approach to manage these issues. And me, I don't think it's unfortunate I'm a traditional and environmentalist. I, you can't tell me of chemicals. Mm. If I'm to apply, I will apply uh, uh, organic measures. But they are, I think uh, that word notwithstanding, it's, it's limited. It's limited. I want to caution that don't simply rush into growing if any, anyhow. First, know which type. Some have a lot of sap, which may have advantage in their own, but uh, people don't like it at times. Others don't have sizable inside, I don't know what you call it in English. Uh, we call it from in Nyankore. Others are not sweet. Others are not, uh, cannot stand for a long time after harvest. Good enough for those who export, they don't even want the right ones. But as you plant, don't simply jump into it. You do it selectively. You look for someone, you identify a specific species, which combines all of those advantages. It is surplus, has good, has besides eatable parts inside. Even these which look fibrish are chewable, if you want, and they can even be preserved for even a week. Some, there are those you have it today and tomorrow it's already slippery. Yeah. So um, that is what I want to caution about. Don't go into a nursery because some people in nurseries, unless you are sure of the uh, seriousness of that person or dependability. Otherwise, if you want to dispose of his seedlings, they just land on seeds, plant and for you come. Mm. What are the key steps one should follow? when planting jackfruit the simplest the simplest the jackfruit these, these things over dig this money how many feet by what else money of course if you do it uh, seriously and scientifically you know uh, my, my the challenge i have is that i combine with the traditional way it may have its own advantage but the fennel will grow in any circumstance but i imagine if you have it a good, give it a good a good uh, planting pit and apply manure or if it doesn't need a lot of manure caution must be taken mm. it needs water but again not too much when water is too much it wrinkles up and it does not so put on so many fruits because fruits what i need to tell you that fruits are nothing but stores 
preserving for hard times. So if it is comfortable, it may not see any need. That's why some people you they begin putting in nails, doing what? Wapi if any will the cause must be other circumstances. Mm -hmm. And if it delays, don't rush to cut it. Some types put on even after ten years. And they have turned out to be the best. Mm -hmm. There are some I've ever cut out of impatience and I regret it later. Dominic understood the importance of proper pruning and maintaining the health of productivity of his jackfruit trees. During the trees' early stages, he pruned to establish a strong framework and remove any weak or crossing branches. As the tree matured, he focused on thinning the canopy to improve airflow and light penetration. Yeah, at some point, as it grows, mm -hmm. say if it is like one meter, remove some topmost nodules so that it now brings branches. The wider it is, the better. And when it is mature, if you cut, it will bring even like if you remove some some uh, some some branches, it will give you like double the number of fenes. But they are likely to be smaller than the original. That's why my prefer to let it go naturally. Experience had taught Dominic the art of determining when a jackfruit was ready for harvesting. He relied on visual and olfactory cues. A ripe fruit would exhibit the vibrant yellowish or brownish color, accompanied by a sweet and fragrant aroma. He also checked for his slight cracking around the stem and gentle give when pressing the fruit gently. <laughs> The jackfruit usually use the nose or the, 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 the finger or you just beat, you, you, you hear drum-like. Even if it, is, it has not started smelling, if that aroma has not come, but if you hear the sound, it's like how we export, harvest those for export. Some, like some of us who are used to them, you can even look at it. There are some varieties which will become a bit brownish. Like uh, like they are, it's a rust, like a rusty surface, you know it has matured. But otherwise, the formula is sound change, sounding, and the the, the aroma or the smell. But the aroma or the smell that is already post post mortem, it's irreversible. Mm. If it is serious commercial selling, unless you are like some of us who are near town. You, you day you if me I have all those which are already ripe because the market is there. Every day people are on my door mm -hmm. looking for a surprise. So there I don't need to sell raw ones except to those who are taking for export. Dominic is a jackfruit trees where his pride and joy, providing him with generous yields year after year. On average, a mature tree could produce between a hundred and two hundred fruits a season. I've already told you a mm. fully grown fenne or jackfruit can easily give you a hundred, not below a hundred jackfruits. And it puts on the twice, two seasons, although one is slightly less. So if the other one was like a hundred, another one might be like eighty. So you can just put a serious fenne will always give you 200 fruits a year. Dominic family believed that jackfruit farming offered an opportunity for farmers to ensure sustainability and environmentally friendly practices. In his response, he highlighted the inherent adaptability and resilience of jackfruit as a crop, making it well suited for conservation and environmentally conscious farming. I think it is the best conservation. You look at my area. I'm, I'm, I'm like actually like. My area is like an organized wind. Yes. You have seen it for yourself. It is just darkness at noon. And the darker, the better for it, because it will remain cool. And darkness is not a very big problem for a jackfruit. For vacado, darkness can reduce on the size. But a jackfruit, not so much. Mm.
It's it's the most convenient crop you can think of. I think in some areas, after realizing how all those advantages, I think that's why they they called that thing, thinking that if you plant it, you die, so that other people cannot take them and grow them. You know, in the marketing, there's a way we have the marketing. Yeah, like me, I'm happy. I would be happy if I would have other farmers with that number or even much more of fennel. Where you say, when I go here, I'll get fennel. The moment you are an isolated farmer, some people mistake it. You think you are you are alone and you are you are a monopolist. Mm -hmm. You are just lacking the market. Nobody will come there. I've, see, I've seen it better in my area where I come from in Wakanda. You see everybody, even in Koboko, they tell me, if you want my talk, go to Isinjo. Simply because everybody grows it. If there was one or two people, especially the news I get from exporters and these people, when I Google, it is a, it's a crop with potential. We are talking of Fene the Fene, but they say the seeds, if you dry them, not under, under direct, you yourself have told me you have tested. You know, you will not even have ask for gene on it. If you have your, your fennel seeds, uh, you can even pound them into, and it become like a, what do they call it? You put like coffee or tea in, in tea. There are many ailments it can handle. That, that, those details I may not have, but at least what I know is that fennel has the potential. It is convenient to grow. It is it favors almost each and every area. You find the in Koboko, you find the in Kisoro. You find it in Bundubudu, you find it in Sese. So Uganda, like they are trying to do for Vakedo has, I think Fene would be. And it's a crop, if you have land, it's a crop for a humble earning person. Even in the wilderness, if you grow, you go. If you grow, you don't come to pick the food. Although if you look after it well, that's how it will give you returns. Mm. For farmers, embracing jackfruit cultivation provides a pathway to sustainability and environmentally friendly practices. As Dominic wisely observed, the duck shaded nature of his area perfectly suited the growth of jackfruit trees, making it a highly compatible crop in terms of land utilization. Dominic, the dedicated jackfruit farmer in Katete Mbarara, Western Uganda, demonstrated the power of sustainable and organic farming practices, his passion for nature and his commitment to cultivating jackfruit trees without the use of pesticides, created a thriving and natural haven in his garden. Through his knowledge and experience, Dominic overcame challenges, nurtured his trees, and reaped the rewards of his hard work. Dominic's story serves as an inspiration to other farmers, highlighting the potential of organic farming and the beauty of working in harmony with nature. His success in jackfruit farming showcases the possibilities of sustainable agriculture, not only in terms of yield, but also in preserving the environment and promoting healthier food production. As Dominic continues his journey as a jackfruit farmer, he remains dedicated to finding innovative ways to improve productivity while staying true to his organic principles. His story encourages others to embrace sustainable practices and work towards a more environmentally conscious approach to farming. In the end, Dominique's natural jackfruit haven in Katete Mbarara not only represents his own success, but also symbolizes the harmony that can be achieved between human beings and the land they cultivate. It stands as a testament to the potential for the sustainable farming to create a greener, healthier, and more prosperous future for all.